In this video, we are about to learn how to be faithful in soul winning. What up beautiful people, it's your boy Mundus. Welcome to the Shining Light family, a place where you learn God's word that's going to build your faith strong and transform your life. I'm back again with another beautiful daily devotional from Rhapsody of Realities by Pastor Chris. And like we do, we're going to review one of the articles from the devotional. We're going to do a Bible study and learn God's word. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. This is going to be really awesome. So like I said, we're talking about soul winning. And our theme scripture is taken from the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 6. It says, I'll read this. It says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That's amazing. This is Paul's declaration. He said, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. I don't want to get, you know, before we get in, we dive this in deep into this, let me just read the first paragraph and then we can discuss this a little bit further. So Pastor Chris says, as Christians, we have received the mandate to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. It is a high calling. It is something you have to do with all boldness, faith, courage, and conviction. You must never be ashamed or apologetic about Christ and the message of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of who you are in him. Don't let others make you ashamed of what you believe. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto the salvation to ev unto, unto salvation to everyone that believeth. That's Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And this is important. We need to be proud to know Jesus, man. This is the most beautiful thing that could ever happen to us. You know, a lot of people, um, are not, there's some things they're not ashamed of. Like, if you live, um, especially depending on what nation you live in, people have different groups they represent, different organizations they represent, and they are proud of these organizations and groups. For example, they'll have, like, different parades, you know what I mean? I don't want to mention, but you, you understand what I'm saying. With different parades. And they would boldly march down the streets, proud and excited for who they are. Unapologetic, too. Unapologetic, with no apologies, with no shame over who they are. How much more we that believe the true gospel? There's only one gospel. He said, how can we be ashamed of this gospel? Um. So... This is important. I mean, Christ, what Christ has done for us is nothing to be ashamed of. It's something to be proud of because he has made us sons of God and he has given us this great commission, this great mandate to go preach this gospel to the lost. We are saviors. And, uh, and he said, um, he says, how, how can a city that's set on a hill be hid? We are that city on that hill. Our light shine. How can you light up a light and hide it under the bed? We are not to, oh, let me show you the scripture. So you can understand, we are not supposed to be apologetic. We're supposed to be bold for Christ. So let's see the scripture. Uh, hmm, I think it's Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. And that's because this is the year of lights, right? So we have to shine. 535, I believe. No, 31. Uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes, oh man, let me find it. Let me find this. So it's Matthew chapter 5 and verse, let's start from, let's start from verse 13. This is Jesus speaking. He says, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore, thenceforth, therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And he giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We are the light of the world. The world is in darkness. And if we hide our light, they walk in darkness. You know, so it is... Is something of urgency that we we preach. So this is of importance. We have a mandate. Um, let's keep on reading this. Pastor said, "It is the it is only the gospel 
that can catapult the sinner into salvation and righteousness. It is only through the preaching of the gospel that the righteousness of God can be unveiled and embraced. So there is no options to the gospel. It is its power and efficacy is uncontrovertible. Uh, I said that right. That's only. <laughs> it is only. It is only message when received makes sinners sons of God in a moment of time. So we have this power. He says this is a power to change human lives. How can we be ashamed? That's the title. The title is talking about well, being faithful and so winning. Um, setting um setting a curriculum or a schedule to reach out in your neighborhood. You know you can start. I know you have to be. If you've not uh, spoken to someone about Jesus, you might feel intimidated. Um, you might be wondering, what should I say? Um, um, what if they they laugh at me? Hey, remember this should encourage you. You're not ashamed of the gospel. This should encourage you. You have the words that will change any human being's life. This should encourage you. Hey, you're winning out. They're not. Re they're not winning out. You're the one winning out to them. So you're the one that has something to give. So who's above in this? It's not them. You. So it doesn't matter if they laugh at you. It doesn't matter if they look at you with scorn. Who cares? You're not ashamed of the gospel. I remember <laughs> when I first. Uh, not not when I first. I mean. We went out to reach out. I was in um, I was in Philly, so we went, we went to this train station, um, that was in the U.S. So we went to, uh, we were reaching out, um, uh, we we uh, rhapsody winning uh, winning souls. So we went to this train station, and you know the train station is so crowded, and is everybody can see you. So I'm going, we're going. I'm I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm like oh, I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to tell them about Jesus and I have rhapsody. So we're going. And I'm talking to one person. I'm like, yeah, I want to tell you about this. this, this, this. And they just look at me. It's like, no, I don't, I don't want to hear this. And I go to the next person. And they were like, I'll, I'll say everything. I'm like, yeah, blah, you know, Jesus, the rhapsody, blah, blah, blah. They would say, no. And I'll go to the next person. I just kept on doing that. One after the other, they were like, no, 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 no. And then they're looking at me strange. And probably some, some other people were smiling. But inside, I was like, I'm preaching the gospel. I was excited. I'm like, it doesn't matter what you say. I am winning souls. I'm ashamed. I figured out the people that change lives, the people that change the world, are the ones that don't sit in the sidelines. They're the ones that put themselves out there. Like Jesus, he said, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Jesus put himself on the cross as a sacrifice. While others watched and mocked, but he was their savior. So we have that same ministry. People will laugh. People will mock. People will look at you. People will make comments. It doesn't matter. You don't know these folks. You're trying to save their lives. So I think that's the number one main thing people are usually concerned about is what are other people going to say? What are people going to think about me? What they say about me? It doesn't matter. Because you're winning. You're doing what's right. And you have the power that will change lives. Anyway, let me, let's keep on reading this. Um... So it's a, Pastor said in Second Timothy chapter one verse thirteen, Paul said to Timothy, "Hold fast the form of sound words which thou was heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus." That means the words of the gospel are potent, filled with inspiration, power, and divine energy. So, um, so no sinner should be around you over a period of, over a period without being impacted impacted by the power of the gospel that you bear be determined about it be so fired up with the gospel that is impact in men's lives that that it impacts in men's life and spread around the world is all that matters to you you know um jesus says something that's really touching he said if you're ashamed of me I'll be ashamed of you when I come back with my holy angels. Oh, God. When I read that, I'm like thinking, man, I don't want you to be ashamed. If you think, man, because this is the thing. It could be, um, especially you might have those feelings because you might thinking, oh, man, we all self-conscious. So you're going, I was like, oh, what do people say? What if they say no? It doesn't matter. Because you're thinking that means their opinion matters to you more. Because you're thinking, what if they laugh at me? What if they mock me? 
But whose opinion matters? Christ. Do you want Jesus? God forbid, we don't want Jesus to be ashamed of us. Oh, dear Lord. No, I want to show you this. Let me show you this. This should be more. Uh, I want to uh, motivate you. I want to get motivated myself too. So when we go out and, and this, we're speaking in other tongues and we have these thoughts thinking, oh, what are people saying? We do it anyway. And the thing about it, the beautiful thing about it, it doesn't matter what your mind feels. It doesn't matter how you feel like. If you're still doing it, you're doing it. <laughs> That's the trick. You might, you don't have to feel like doing it, but as long as you're doing it, that's all that counts. So don't don't let your mind play tricks on you to feel like, oh, let me feel good first. No, it doesn't matter how you feel like. You go preach the gospel. So let me read. I'm reading the book of Mark chapter 8. Let's start from verse 34. He says, And when he had called the people unto him um, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels the same shall save it do you see there it says for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with his holy angels oh dear lord so this should motivate you there's some things people are so not ashamed of and we in the we live in the world people are free to express themselves in in causes which are just meaningless but they are bold about these causes that don't make sense and they'll go run around the streets they'll they'll carry placards they'll do everything to demonstrate how they believe in this cause unapologetically how much more is that we have the gospel of light are we going to be like oh yeah i'm not a christian no he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He says, whoever will be ashamed of me and my words, he says, I'll be ashamed of them when I come with my holy angels, with the glory of God and the glory of the Father and my holy angels. Dear Lord, that's not going we, we think this is not have going to happen to us because the Spirit of God is telling us this. So he's instructing us so we cannot be ashamed. The gospel is not something that is personal. It is something <laughs> that was meant to be distributed to the whole world. God is building us up so that we can build others. That was That's the whole plan. We have been built up strong to go reach out. We listen to these words so that we can go. Because Jesus died on that cross. He was shamed on our behalf. So that we can never be ashamed again. So why should we be ashamed no more? We should be free and bold to proclaim this like others are free to and bold to proclaim whatever they believe in. But we have more reason to be unapologetic. No apologies. I believe in Jesus and I believe this gospel is going to change your life. I'm not trying to be politically correct. I'm not trying to cater to you. No, you need Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to tell you this testimony. So, uh, so I was... um. So we were now, I think, yeah, yeah, it's still in in, 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 in Philly, in the U.S. So in, I was in Philly, in the U.S. I'm winning souls, we're preaching the gospel, winning souls, and I got a couple of numbers, right? So I'm, I'm following up, so I'm trying to call, you know, it's like, call the numbers that you got from going out to reach out. So I called this number, and then this girl... Cause you know when we were going out, I think we, we it was like a it was like a campaign. We were winning, winning so many souls. We, we 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 had a group of us, so we reached out to a lot of folks, and I had a lot of numbers. So we we're just going through numbers, and so I talked to this girl because you know, you can't remember everyone that you talk to, but you get the numbers. You don't even know. So I'm so I'm, I'm talking to her on the phone, and I found out she was not born again, but she gave us a number or whatever. I'm talking to her on the phone and she was on the bus. So I'm telling her about Jesus and it's like, oh yeah, you need to be born again and stuff like that. So it's so we were just having a conversation and she would say, I'm on the bus right now. I'm going to work. Um, can we talk about this later? <laughs> and I was like, I was so bold by the spirit. I was like, what do you mean you're going to work? I'm saying, I was like, you know, you could die right now and you could go to hell. 
It's like, are you ashamed to receive Jesus on that bus? He said, and she was like, no, God, I, no, because when I saw you, know, she was like, oh, everyone, see, I can't. No, I was trying to get her to get born again, right? And she was saying, I can't, I can't pray right now. I'm on the bus. I was like, no. I'm like, are you ashamed of Jesus? Are you ashamed? So you, when you die, you go to hell because you are ashamed. You didn't want anyone to look at you in the bus. And I'm like, you need to be, you need to be born again now. <laughs> I didn't even know where the boldness came from, but it was from the spirit, right? So she was like, okay. I'm like, you're going to say this prayer right now in the bus in front of everyone. And she was like, yes. So I lead her in that prayer of salvation and she gets born again. And she was so excited. She was happy. So the thing is, unapologetic. We ain't trying to sugarcoat nothing for you. I'm sorry. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe he died for you. We believe God raised him from the dead. We believe his words are real. We are not apologizing for it. Not a single bit. This is how we got to be unashamed of the gospel. Unashamed of his words. Wow, wow, wow. Um, let me finish this, right? The Bible says, Those that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever. That's Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. Shine for the master in this year of lights by making enduring impact with the gospel. Go the extra mile like Jesus. Let what matters the most to you be to do the will of the Father and to finish his work. You can read that in John chapter 4 verse 34. Let it be what you live for. He's counting on you for the salvation of many in your world and in the regions beyond. Therefore, be faithful in your responsibility as a soul winner. Be faithful. Get started. Don't think about what you're going to say. You got the spirit. Even if you went and just say, hi, Jesus loves you. That's all that matters. So I want us to take this prayer together. Just say this after me. Dear Father, I thank you for entrusting me with the divine responsibility of reaching those in my world and in distant lands with the message of eternal life. The light of your glorious gospel that I bear dispels the darkness in the hearts of the unconverted, destroying the bonds of religion and establishing them in your righteousness. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You can read further studies in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 19. And you can read a one year Bible plan or two year plan. Pick whichever one that's comfortable that suits you. You know, you don't have to be in a rush. So just pick whichever one that's comfortable for you to follow. So I'll be, I'll be blessed by today's devotional. You know, it's been inspired. You inspired faith to go out and reach and win souls and, 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 and be bold for Jesus. Be bold about this gospel. Be bold about what we believe in. And apologetic. No apologies. Um, so thank you, know, thank you once again for watching. Thank you once again for your comments. Thank you once again for your support. We are, one, we are family. We're making progress. And if, if it's your first time watching this video, your first time in the channel, welcome to the channel, my family. We learn God's word every single day. Learning the words of God, building our faith super strong, and then moving forward. So welcome to the family. Make sure you subscribe if you have not. Um, and I'm going to be praying for you uh, before I wrap up this video. But I want to give a chance to someone to receive Jesus. I mean, we're talking about winning souls. This is a perfect time. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is your moment for you to receive salvation. And I want to lead you into a prayer of salvation right now. So say this prayer after me. Oh, Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. Say that prayer. Congratulations. You're born again. It's as simple as that. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can learn God's word. That's number one. Because you want, you want to build your faith strong. And then you need to go to church. Um, you need to find a good church that's close to you. So you can build your faith. This is important. And so welcome once again to the channel. Make sure you subscribe. And then you can watch a video every day to build your faith and learn God's word. So I want to pray for all you that are watching. I pray that God's hand of blessing upon you. That the Spirit of God will empower you. And strengthen you with might, with boldness to preach this gospel unapologetically. 
with no apologies. You win souls like you've never won in your life. Because the Spirit of God will lead you. He'll put the right words for you to say. He'll guide you to the right folks. No, you are bold as a lion. And you're preaching this gospel, winning souls, making progress because you're shining like the star that you are. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.